We're back, and we're going to be talking next about a really important topic, I believe, and that is the cultural Marxists' assault on our judicial system, specifically the Supreme Court of the United States. Indeed, a catchphrase has been coined in the aftermath of uh, Sam Alito's draft opinion about reversing the Roe versus Wade ruling, abort the court seems to now be being cited as part and parcel of what a summer of rage is now promising us of violence in the streets um, under the pretext that this has to be done to oppose the judicial process of this country uh, working its constitutional duties. A man who has worked in the judicial branch, as well as with great distinction in the executive branch, as well as the Congress, is our next guest. His name is Robert Charles. He has most recently served as an assistant secretary of state with responsibility for narcotics and um, law enforcement affairs. Uh, the most recent of several important positions, both in oversight committees in the Congress, as well as uh, serving in the White House under Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush, and not least as a clerk in the appellate court, the Ninth Circuit, as I recall. It's good to have you back, Bobby. Thank you very much for taking some time with us today. I want to start by asking you, as a veteran of government in all of these roles, and most especially as an attorney and as someone who has you know, served at high levels in the judicial branch, what are we to make of the assault now underway? I mean, quite literally, a physical threat, at least, of assault against uh, justices of the Supreme Court and the process of which they are in a critically important part. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I know, Frank, that everyone watching and listening knows this, but um, democracies are delicate. The rule of law is delicate. And the left aims to escalate and to disrupt and ultimately to create an environment in which they sucker punch those, the rest of us who believe that rule of law is the way that societies should function. This undermining of the Supreme Court I, I'm afraid it is going to get worse before it gets better. And the goal here is not just to undermine the Supreme Court, it is to undermine all of the body of law that supports, I say conservative, but it's really judicially conservative thinking. That is to say, our entire country is built on judicially conservative thinking. It is built on the idea that we have a thing called a constitution. And this constitution is not like a statute. It, it's, a, it's a solid rock on which we built our country. And the country has been pretty good built on that rock. And, and then on that rock, uh, not to paraphrase, you know, biblical terms, although everybody who, who, who understood that phrase actually in the, in the time of the founders, but the gist is that the Supreme Court is the way that you keep faithful to that, that rock. So the, the, what the left is doing, Frank, beyond this immediate case, beyond the idea that they would damage or attempt to threaten or intimidate or, God forbid, do harm to a Supreme Court justice or a federal judge, uh, they are really trying to dismantle civil society. And, and, and I think that's the, that's the problem. We have to understand that as crazy as it is, uh, as fringy as they should be, uh, you know, there is a Bolshevik element here, and it's, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It is. And I, I so appreciate you saying that, Bobby, because I think one of the services that we try to perform here at Securing America is, is really connecting dots mm -hmm. for people who are often focused on, or if they're aware of any of this at all, seized with perhaps a specific problem, but they don't really recognize, uh, I'm afraid oftentimes, yeah. that it's just one facet mm -hmm. of a much larger uh, well, march through the institutions, it's been described as a, it's now taking down the institutions out, you know, it seems, in this know, case, the judicial branch. You know, to be honest, Frank, I think it's a combination of intent. And then, you know, in, in Washington, they use the phrase useful idiots, people who are willing to uh, sort of go along because they don't think hard or they haven't really studied history, so they don't really know. I'll tell you the level of ignorance about history right now and, and including office holders is really stunning to me. I mean, we go back, whether you were left or right, people like Senator uh, Byrd 
could cite Cicero. He knew, understood the history of mankind um, and of America. And so, so did most of those who've served up until the current moment. Um, and you hear a, a press secretary, for God's sakes, the other day uh, before she left, saying that there are three branches of government, uh, the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the Justice Department. I said to myself, did I, did I hear what I just, did I just hear that? Surely she doesn't really, and, and she said it again. And so, you know, uh, if you think that, that the Justice Department, which is part of the executive branch, is the judiciary, which was founded, at, you know, different articles, Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, uh, you do need to go back and reread your constitution. And if it's that bad that it's happening in the White House, then think about what's happening in the streets. Well, that's the problem, Bobby. It's not that it's just a moron uh, in this case. It's that it bespeaks a sense that only really the president and his immediate subordinates should exercise power in this country and this Congress is being Dangerous. marginalized. And I think that's uh, what they have in mind for the judicial branch as well. But that's not the same thing as though it does, I think, probably reinforce what's being done in terms of these uh, direct assaults. Yes, on well, the it scares court. me. And, and, and you're, you, you made reference to this, the prospect that you might actually see people not so much packing the court, but purging it. Well, it, it's extremely Perhaps dangerous. Violent. You know, there's a statute, uh, 18 U.S.C. 1507, and that's just one of the statutes that should be currently by the Justice Department and by uh, the Maryland and Virginia and D.C. Uh, state, the Maryland, Virginia state and D.C. jurisdictions should be yes. being brought against these protesters because you are not allowed under federal law to intimidate. Why? Well, you don't want to intimidate for the outcome. That That's that's a, you know, that that's that's a horrific turn of events where we have a society where the threat of force is going to change a judicial outcome, but we don't want to lose a justice. I mean, for God's sake, we sure don't. Uh, this, we don't want to lose justice or a justice, for that matter. Well, that's right, Bobby. We have to take a short pause. Um, I want to pivot a little bit to another issue in which I believe the assault on our nation is underway. Um, the sovereignty of our nation seems to now be uh, up for grabs if the Biden team has its way with respect to something called the World Health Organization. We're going to talk about exactly what's afoot there and what it might mean for you on the other side of this very short break. Right back with Bobby Charles. <laughs> 